everyone, this video is on the full moon in Aquarius that takes place on the 15th of August 2019 at 1.29 p.m. and that's based on British summer time. And I'm going to give you a rundown of what this full moon means and how it's going to affect all of us over the next couple of days. The full moon, it builds up gradually, so over time. So it, it hits the full moon period on the 15th. But I would say the 13th, 14th while it's building up and the 16th, 17th while it's waning and the energy is abating. All of those days kind of count towards this energy that's happening up in the sky because the moon is really the most important things that thing that governs our feelings and with it rising up to become this huge torch in Aquarius on the 15th really means that we're going to to be connected with that energy so what it means is that we have the Sun and the moon 180 degrees away from each other and the Sun is at 22 degrees in Leo and the moon is at 22 degrees in Aquarius so the moon is totally lit up it reaches its monthly um, completion point and it goes, oh, I can relax. And it lets go of all of its Aquarius energy and it showers us in lots of Aquarian energy. So we all feel the need to see things from a bigger perspective, to be selfless, to be a leader, a humanitarian, to be intelligent, to communicate. To think about the needs of other people as well as our own needs. Now the things that are very obvious during this full moon are the personal planets all ganging up against this poor little moon. Mars is the male principle and it's the personal planet of ambition and what I want. Venus is the personal planet of love and desire and sex and creativity. And Mercury is the personal planet of communication, thinking, and ideas. And they all sit with the sun. And it's interesting that all personal planets are sitting there together with the sun and saying, hey, we're all in Leo, okay? We're loud. We love loudly. We break down walls to get to where we want. We party hard. We're loving life. We're really, really just living for ourselves and we're really feeling ourselves right now and we yeah we're in Leo it's like hear me roar it's like watch me jump and watch me play and look at me living my best possible life and then we have this opposition with this moon and the moon is your feelings and it's like a mirror and it says, okay, great, you're over there, 180 degrees away. You're like all about you, but the light you're giving me, the way I'm reflecting it is as not you. It's, I, did, I mentioned this in the weekly horoscope, check that out, I met, talk about the moon there. But the first couple of days in the week are about love of self. Okay, so I rock and I'm going to play beach volleyball today because that's going to make me happy and... I just, I'm going to kiss my girlfriend and then we're going to watch a movie and it's going to be the best. And I'm going to have the greatest day. Um, the second half of the week, it's about love of others. Oh my God, I want to be of service to that community and help them build this garden because it's just going to revitalize this whole area. It's going to be fabulous. Okay, so those kind of vibes. Now, the full moon in Aquarius is the tipping point or the main instigator of this change from I love myself, which is great, to I love other people and I want to help. And it's at 22 degrees, which is the master number of the builder. So all that fiery fuel, that energy of the sun being pumped into the moon reflects in Aquarius and you're totally fueled up when it comes to how can I be of service to the world? How can I research? How can I educate? How can I innovate? How can I make the planet better? How can I make life better for 
humanity? How can I make life better on this planet? How can I advance the human race? Nothing has happened for ages. I'm a little bit like, you know, something's going to happen. And I, again, watch the weekly because I talk about the conjunction of Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto next year, which happens, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, the major conjunction or great conjunction, that only happens once every 20 years. With the addition of Pluto, something really is going to change in our society and I talk about that in the weekly check that out if you're interested in that but 22 is the master number of the builder so you are going to be inspired and you're gonna have ideas about how you can be of service to humanity which when you put them out there are going to serve as your legacy and they will last like the guy who created air conditioning, he sold an air conditioner and they're still being sold and they're still being used and they're cooling houses right now. Whether that helped humanity or not is debatable. Yes, it helped in the sense that on a day-to-day -day basis we can live in places that otherwise we couldn't. But in terms of the energy it costs and the pollution it creates, maybe it's in the long term not such a good thing because it's actually harming the planet or releasing some gas which is toxic or poisonous or whatever it may be so those of you who are humanitarians those of you who are involved in the fundamental shifts that are happening next year in the way our society all thinks and behaves this is your initial wake-up call and when the universe drops info on us, it never does so just with one person. It drops it into the head of several people and into the people most likely to do something with it. So if the universe wants a certain book written, it's going to plant the idea in seven heads. And one of those heads is going to actually write the book. One may be distracted or one may doubt the message that they're getting. But... That's why it's important to be consistent in your spiritual practice because the universe is going to give you specific, unique information if it knows that you're going to actually listen to it, not dismiss it as fantasy and do something about it. So if you get the message that, you know, we need to do something about climate change now or we need to do something about artificial intelligence right now because I have seen the future and I have seen a future where we're all slaves to the machines as an example okay so you're gonna have a vision or um, a feeling or a sixth sense or a snapshot or a feeling or a, a, a knowing about the future and about the nature of humanity and what needs to change. And you're transcending the self and you see yourself as, as part of it, but you also see yourself as an objective observer of what's going on on this planet and what we as creatures are doing. And you see it from an objective perspective and when you have that perspective you will know you look at it and you say okay universe why are you showing me this why am I seeing the planet and these people from this perspective what is it that you want me to know and you'll get the message the content the humanitarian message that you then either teach or describe or express and that's what's going to help and it's going to be ahead of its time and it's totally not about you but it is so it's like because you're the conduit you're the facilitator so it's not about you because you're not standing up on stage singing your favorite song saying ah it's not like that okay because it's not about your voice your fame whatever it may be that you get this message about ai being dangerous and um, you hold a TED talk about it and it's not about you, it's about the content of what you're saying. So it's about you, but it isn't about you because like I said, you're just the messenger. 
Now the full moon forms a couple of relationships. First of all, it has a trine with Pallas Athena at 26 degrees in Libra. Pallas Athena is the warrior goddess and she powerfully wants you and helps you to articulate this message and to do it in a way that is palatable to people and that other people will actually accept it and think about it. Like if you say, do you know what? Um, this is bad for the environment. So I would suggest that you walk f everywhere from now on. And everyone's going to be like, yeah, that's such a great idea. Wonderful. Hurrah. Genius. We're not going to use our cars anymore. But then the next day, it's like, oh, well, I've got to pick up mom from the airport. I can't walk to the airport, so I'm going to get in the car and do it. So it's about being useful and actually making suggestions that are going to work, not ridiculous things like that. And it's about explaining these, what are they called? measures that are t austerity measures it's almost like you're the messenger of austerity of an auster austerity message of an austerity message or a message of love that human beings should love each other and listen to each other and we all know how good we are at that but it's a message that Pallas Athena is going to help you make more likable people are going to listen to you we have the opposition between the Midheaven in Leo, Mars in Leo, Venus in Leo, and the Sun in Leo. So it's about giving birth to a new idea, a new concept, a new ideology, a new way of governing, a new way of living, a new way of behaving on planet Earth. That's going to be born or you'll start to see the glimpses of it so that it can be born next year and um, yeah it's going to take on a life of its own so we've got to look at history here a bit you know like in um, in the war, the second world war it didn't just happen overnight Germany was super poor and uh, this guy came along and he promised all sorts of things and he promised short term, lovely short term things like employment and money and infrastructure, yay! But the long term, eh, not so much. And we all know what happened with World War II. And the disgrace and the loss of humanity. So this is about gaining humanity because something is going to come and test it. And all of you prophets and all of you people in positions of power and all of you people who are going to make a change, you're the people watching this video. So hats off to you because I'm just a messenger but you guys are actually going to do the work of changing our society because you're in positions of power you're not marginalized you're not on the outskirts you're someone who has a say and you're someone who can by setting an example help other people follow the rules like when princess diana shook went to the aids ward in england and she shook the hand of an aids patient without gloves she set an example that made it impossible for other people to be bigoted or to be afraid. So one person, I, I know that you're probably not as famous as Princess Diana, but one person can make such a huge difference. And I don't think we we see that enough and that's why the week is such a great build up because you start to see yourself as so amazing and then this moon flips it all around and it's like well am I that amazing because I could be doing something for everyone else not just for me I know I've made my life a gorgeous wonderful play playing field but now it's time maybe to give something back or maybe to be to, to leave a positive legacy behind here on planet earth
it's uh, it's your choice you know no one can no one can answer these things for you it's a personal it's a matter of personal preference some people don't want to be remembered so that's all the um that's all the relationships the moon makes the chart in itself has a mystic rectangle in it and a mystic rectangle is what it says on the tin it's a um it means that you're a mystic or that you have the ability to connect with the higher power of your own understanding and you don't need a middleman you don't need a guru or a priest or a shaman or a vicar or whatever so by listening of how can I be of human a service to humanity, you will get a specific message in. We've also got a kite in this chart. A kite is a talent that takes off. It connects the Scorpio rising with the North Node in Cancer and Black Moon Lilith and Neptune in Pisces. And it becomes a kite with the part of fortune and the descendant in Taurus. So, there are going to be people who come out of this and who are going to be well known in this movement, in this fight. Whatever the challenge is going to be next year, certain people are going to arise out of the obscurity they're in and they're going to take center stage. So, the players are going to change. We're being told that right now through this full moon. The players of our public life, there are going to be some significant changes there. And the new generation is going to arise and kind of step into its own power. There's a yod in this chart as well. So this is divinely ordained. It's about moving forward so that our physical future and care of ourselves and our survival is guaranteed. Wow, wouldn't it be nice if we woke up to a world in 2020 where we care about each other and oh, that would be utopia for me. If every person cared for one person who, who, who was struggling or something like that. If every person did that and we eradicated poverty and fear from the planet. What we would manifest and what an amazing planet we would live on. And we have the potential for heaven on earth. It's just that the ego doesn't want us to achieve that. So we're all busy and doubting ourselves and full of fear and meh, meh, meh. And we see ourselves as separate. There needs to be a breakthrough and a shift in the paradigm. And this shift in the paradigm is coming. And you watching this may are very likely to be part of that paradigm shift. Because you're watching this video and I'm no genius I'm no rebel I'm no um, I'm no mind reader I can look at the predictive astrology and listen to my intuition and get a sense of yes okay I feel that love comes into your life in March but I can't give you an exact answer on how this paradigm shift of humanity is going to look I can just glimpse the the first stirrings of it, which this full moon in Aquarius is. I'm just tilting my head to see if there are other triangles and grand trines. Yeah, there's another kite that's formed with Neptune and that... No, that's on top of the mystic rectangle, okay. Uh, I think that's it. So the big changes are going to be in um, freedom, the way we move forward, um, humanity, the way we see ourselves, spirituality, and whether we mm, whether we choose the self or we choose the other, whether we choose being insular and um, shut off from the world or whether we embrace the world and we do things together and I think the world is going to become more inclusive and people during this full moon basically you're going to wake up and you're going to download a sense of 
I am part of the human family and I'm going to contribute something to the human family so that this family is going to thrive and survive and do well. And that's how you see it. You don't see it as I'm going to help the family members who are Jewish or Muslim or Christian or atheist. I'm going to help everybody regardless of creed, religion, gender, race. We're all the same. And I'm excited about this because I never talk like this and something is arriving by choo-choo train. Something is coming into our world that's going to change the world and the way we see it forever. And I feel that it includes a greater humanitarian perspective which can't ha harm anybody. Okay, so that's what I get for you during this... Um, full moon in Aquarius. Have a wonderful time. Just give yourself 5-10 minutes to kind of get into the zone and to download what you're being showered with and to just feel the energy and what it's all about. And then ask how can I implement this? How can I do my bit? And you'll be given direct guidance. If you'd like a personal reading with me and get guidance in the sense of what is my life purpose? What's my life mission? What are my vocational aptitudes? What's destined for me in love and romance and relationship and moving and travel where the best place is for me to live? I can answer all of those things by drawing up your birth chart. I need your place of birth, date of birth and time of birth. If you don't have the time of birth, order a chart rectification with me. That's a process where I work out your time of birth. Once I've got those three pieces of info, I have a snapshot of the sky at the moment you were born. It shows me everything about you. It's like a blueprint of your soul. I still can't believe that I have access to it. It's so amazing. Um, so I can tell you about your purpose, your mission, what's going to happen in future, how you can change the future. Because certain things are destined, but we also have self-will, so we can manifest what things are going to be like. So if you have any questions or you're interested in any of that, then please get in touch for a personal reading. Have a wonderful full moon here. And don't dismiss the ideas you're getting. They may seem silly or just trivial. Nothing is too trivial. If you get the message, I can help by, I don't know, showering fewer times a week. And you think, what is she great what a dumb guy that's that's the guidance that's what i watched a 22 minute video about so that i know that i can use less water gee whiz thanks so even if it's a letdown like that don't dismiss it and just listen to the guidance it's there for a reason and it may be the first inkling and just a test to see if you accept and and go with guidance that doesn't really make sense but you have the faith to go with it and then you get given the actual purpose i don't think the universe tests us so much but it just makes sure that we're listening and that it can get out its message across through us so have a wonderful time please subscribe to the channel and share the video and get in touch for a personal reading on gregoryscott.com i wish you all the best and i'll speak to you soon